Hello there, thrill seekers. This might be my last video for a little bit. I'm not sure. I am heading off to Europe, starting my journey tomorrow. And here's a little tip for you travelers. It turns out it is much less expensive to fly to Europe from Las Vegas than to fly from LAX or from the Ontario airport. Who knew? It's about half the price. So there's a little... Don't say you never learned something from one of my videos. Uh, so I'm going to start off by going to Las Vegas, then going to Europe. And here are the dates very quickly. You'll see that I'm going to be in England, Finland, and Germany. And if you want to go directly to find direct links to those clickable links to those, go to the URL that you're seeing below, which is hardcorezen.info slash events. So uh, here's the video, though. Here's the video for today. Somebody had asked me if I would do a video where I talk about one of my songs that has something to do with Zen, which I thought was an interesting idea, at least to me, and, and at least to one other person out there. So I put this song up a couple of days ago. It's called 108 Sacred Stages, and I wrote it... I'm going to guess sometime between the late 1990s and the year 2003. I don't know. Somewhere in along there. And recorded it then. And the recording that accompanies the video was a recording I made back then in Japan. And then I made the video much later. I made the video last week. So uh, let's hear the song first, and then I'll talk about it. And you, if you've seen the song already, you can fast forward through this part. It should be pretty easy. But here is the song, 108 Sacred Stages. <laughs> Sacred stages 
Okay, first some technical stuff about the song. A couple of people, when I put this up, immediately said, oh, it sounds like About a Girl by Nirvana. And it does have the same opening chords as that song About a Girl by Nirvana, E minor to G. However, uh, I, when I wrote that song, the song 108 Sacred Stages, I was actually referencing one of my own songs, which is called Get Me Out of Sing Sing, which came out on the third Dementia 13 album, Disturb the Air, in 1987. And so it predates, uh, I think it even predates the formation of Nirvana, and it certainly predates Nirvana putting out that song. And here is a little clip of Dementia 13 playing that song live on a TV show in Chicago. Go to our band Dementia 13. I think that show was recorded in like 1989 or something like that and uh, so that's the song so I had used that riff and I, I I actually stole that riff from a song called train for tomorrow by the electric prunes and if you want to look at that up on YouTube I found a couple of uh, people have put it up on YouTube so look for train for tomorrow by the electric prunes so no I did not take that riff from Nirvana just point of pride there. But let me talk about the song. So I copied down the lyrics for myself because I don't remember them off the top of my head. And I'll explain what it has to do with the Zen experience. And this would have been, I, I, did the, I wrote this song before I wrote Hardcore Zen, or I might have been writing Hardcore Zen around the same time as I wrote this song. But I had this idea to maybe express some of the Zen stuff through music if I could. I, I wasn't sure which direction I was going to go, if any, if I was ever going to make what I had done in my Zen life public at all. But I thought about putting out an album of, of uh, Zen-inspired songs, and this would have been one of the ones I was working on towards that. Uh, so that I never finished that album. But anyway... Let me talk about the song. The lyrics of the song, the first lines go, Day by day, the world is spinning from a time with no beginning. Live how you want, but I ain't fooling around. And day by day, the world is spinning from a time with no beginning is kind of a, the, the Zen view of time being infinite, you know, and, and that there isn't a beginning uh, as there is in in the Christian version of things, there is in the beginning. There's this there's this one event that creates the universe. But in in the Zen idea of things, it's it's eternal. So that's what that is about. But the second line is more personal. Live how you want, but I ain't fooling around. Was I was thinking about how people have various different ways that they choose to live and they the things that they choose to pursue. But I Ain't Fooling Around was my own uh, feeling about this. There is a, a line that's printed or written uh, in usually calligraphy on a thing called a han. A han is like this piece of wood and there's a hammer usually attached to it or hanging down from it. And you hit the han in, in, to make a noise in order to signal times to do things. And because it's a device for signaling time at a Zen temple, did I say this is a Zen temple? Oops. Uh, anyway, it's a Zen temple thing. It says time is pressing. Uh, you only have this one life. 
uh, use it wisely, something like that. I forget exactly the quote, but I was kind of thinking of that quote that that I, I don't want to fool around with this life. I want to do something with this life. And a lot of people want to do something with this life, but I don't want fame or or whatever or money or riches. I want to figure life out. That's what I mean by that line. So that's, that's that line. Um, the next line. Something sacred, something sane, you can't touch a face in a window pane. Uh, the, the sacred and sane is the, the thing I'm looking for in, in life, the, the thing that is sacred and sane, the true definition of, of sanity. I've often felt that what the general world, the consensus view of reality regards as sane is probably... I wouldn't call it completely insane. Uh, it's 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 sane enough in general, but it's not right. It's not it's not fully sane, and I want to find the fully sane way of living, which I think is sacred. So that's what I'm talking about there. And can't touch a face in a window pane. I I actually put this song out. Uh, in a different version, uh, I think as a link on my blog uh, years and years ago, 20 odd years ago or something probably, and maybe not quite 20, but anyway, a long time ago. And somebody heard that and thought window pane, oh, window pane acid. Win window pane was a kind of LSD that, that people used in the 60s. I wasn't thinking of that. I was just thinking like a window pane is kind of separating you from reality metaphorically speaking you know you're, you've got this sort of block uh, i feel towards reality and touching the face in the window pane was my image of of you can't you can't touch a face in the window pane you can't get to reality by looking at it through some kind of a lens i had a friend years and years ago back when i was in college who said, uh, you know, he, he was describing his philosophical outlook as he was trying to find the right pair of glasses to look at the world through. And when I heard him say that, I thought, no, I want to kind of see the world without glasses. Actually, if I see the world without glasses, it's a little blurry <laughs> to me. But uh, the idea of just un an unfiltered view of reality is uh, is what I want to uh, to get to. So that's what that line is about. And then the chorus, 108 sacred stages, is almost nonsense. Uh, 108 is a sacred number in Hinduism and Buddhism, and I've heard various explanations for why the number 108 was chosen, and I've forgotten all of them. But I remember coming across one person who said, who enumerated some of the sort of standard explanations for why it's 108, and then generally, or gen basically concluded that it, it, we can't trust any of these explanations. So nobody knows why it's 108. But anyway, 108 sacred stages is this idea of, of, of there being, um, you know, infinite uh, um, steps towards um, true understanding. I don't know what it means, really. It just sounded good. Um, the next verse, though, is about my experience, the, the thing that I wrote about in Hardcore Zen and in There Is No God and He Is Always With You, about the sort sort of so-called enlightenment experience, and this is where, where it gets to that. Can't explain what I no longer see. The whole world is a part of me. Uncreated, unexplainably mine. Uh, that is a reflection on what I could remember at the time of that that happening whatever that was that moment and it's something when I say I can no longer see it's something that's not um, this is how this is the hard part to explain it's not that I can't see it anymore but the the seeing isn't as direct anymore it's it's dimmer now than it was at that moment so that moment left an impression and I can't explain what I no longer see, but the whole world is a part of me. That was the, the feeling, and the world not just being this planet Earth, but the entire universe is part of me. Uh, what's it say? Un uncreated, which is, 
I didn't know about Banke at the time. He's a Buddhist uh, master who liked to talk about the unborn, Musho, uh, and uncreated. So looking at the unborn and uncreated, I could feel that it was uncreated. It was unborn. It was like that. I didn't have those words to express it at the time. But having heard those words later, I feel like, okay, that, that does explain it and unexplainably mine. It's mine. I can't explain the way it is mine, but all of this, including you out there looking at this video and me and Ziggy sleeping over here, uh, it's, it's mine, but it's in an unexplainable way. When you touch it, who is there? Hang a letter upon the air, uncreated, unexplainably fine. Uh, just fine rhymes with mine, and it is fine in a way. But when you touch it, who is there? Hang a letter upon the air. Was I was thinking about, um, I don't know what it is. Who is there? I don't know uh, what I touched. But it seemed to be uh, something, uh, something that was both me and not me at the same time. So calling it who is almost as correct as calling it what. Uh, what was that moment? Who was that moment? That's what I'm asking myself. What else did I say? Hmm. Ah, hang a letter upon the air. Hang a letter upon the air was just a line that came to me, but the image I have is you're trying to write about it. Hang a letter. You know, you're, you're trying to make it into words. Uh, but hanging it on the air, of course, is an unstable place to hang it because it's just going to fall down. You know, hang something on the air, it's going to fall down and it'll crash. And that's what I feel happens anytime you try to explain this stuff. You're just hanging a letter upon the air. And, you know, it works in the song. I don't know if it works as great poetry. I never considered myself a great poet. But that is the uh, the sentiment I felt. And on a uh, what, is, what did I say? Um, uncreated, unexplainably fine. Again, that just uh, refers back to the other line. So that's the song. That's the song about uh, enlightenment or whatever you call it. I, I thought the tone of the song also expresses something of what I wanted to convey. That's something you can do with music that you can't really do with prose is you can you can combine tones and chords and things and, and make a feeling that comes out of that. And I feel like this this one got pretty close to what I wanted to express, especially the thing at the end. The thing at the end isn't just arbitrary. And I realized long, long after I recorded it that the riff is very close to Enter Sandman by Metallica, the riff that comes at the end. But it's not the same, because I checked it. I actually checked it uh, before I put the video out last week. I was listening to it side by side with Enter Sandman, because I thought, oh, God, it's the same. But it's not. It's, it's, it's the same notes, <laughs> but in a slightly different arrangement. But anyhow, uh, that bit I put in there to express that it's not all beautiful, you know, because the, the, the song up until then has a sort of almost... I thought of it as sounding a little bit like Oasis. I don't know if it sounds like Oasis at all, but in my mind it did. And it has that sort of, you know, feeling of being melodic or almost ballad -y, but then it ends with this kind of in-your-face heavy metal. And that was kind of an expression of, of the frustration that one feels with this because it's so difficult to express and it's so difficult to, um, to talk about and it kind of... It, 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 to me, it's sort of, there aren't many people I can talk to about this. That's probably one of the reasons I make these videos. I'm just talking to myself. I don't know if anybody's getting what I'm saying. But it kind of, it kind of puts you in this category of, or it's put me in this category of like, I, I don't know who I can relate to anymore because I've seen something, I've seen through something that I realize not a lot of people see through. And it makes communication it makes relating to people a bit difficult so that's
that's the that's kind of what that bit at the end is for so there you go and uh as i said at the beginning i am on my way to europe i'll put i'll put the uh, the dates up one more time for a few seconds just so you can see them and remind you of, of uh, that and that you can go to the url uh, hardcorezen.info slash events to find more info about this and as i keep saying as far as i know all of these events are still accepting members i think benedictus off is officially closed but i've heard from people who've gone to benedictus off that they've been able to get in at the last minute so uh, i i think uh, you can get into the rest of them pretty easy if you just contact the organizers and say you want to come so please do and maybe we'll see you there all right so that's it oh, oh i forgot to say if you want to donate to me i'm not making uh, I, I might be able to come back with a bit of money in my pocket from from the european tour but it ain't going to be much uh often i lose money on these jaunts so we'll see how it works out this this year but i do make most of my donation money from your donations and you're seeing the url on the screen below which is hardcorezen.info slash donate that is hardcorezen.info slash donate and uh, you can find my paypal and patreon links there if you want to donate it really helps but you don't got to donate if you don't want to uh we will see you next time have a good time all the time bye Hey Ziggy, what do you think of the song? Did you like the song? I think it's a good song. Do you think it expresses something about the Buddhist? No, you're not interested in the song. You just want to go to sleep. Okay, talk to you later, Ziggy. Bye.